Hello, Ice Pack. Ice Pack back again, and I hope you all got a tremendous day cooking up a new crockpot today. Adam Weiss, you're a pro, right? If you're not, WTF are they thinking? Well, as much of a dream come true it would be to be a pro, I'm not nearly consistent enough to be a pro, I'm just being honest. I'm not really sure how much pros play, but I know if I was to try to go pro, I need to start putting in like 10-12 hours of practice every day until I just eat, sleep, dream, hitting like a triple reset ceiling shot and i just do not have it in me to play that much every single day as much as i do love the game but thank you for commenting mm mellow when you blow up remember me at 3k subs oh mm mellow i would absolutely never forget you homie not you nor anyone else who's helping support my dream the ice pack just hit 4.1k subscribers which is just absolutely massive and huge thank you to all of you so much. I love you and appreciate y'all so, so, so much. Zach Hess, you're the only guy that makes YouTube videos, which I appreciate the reference, by the way, that I keep up with. Your videos are very helpful and make me feel extra icy and spicy, you know? And uh, Zach Hess, I do know. I really appreciate, by the way, that you're able to spot the underlying chef work that truly goes into each of these spicy hot videos, you know, dropping some oregano, some parsley, just just the whole package, you know? Everything to just to give my viewers the gourmet plate that they really come to YouTube for. And so with that, let's jump right into this episode of Cooking Recipes with Chef Ice. I mean, uh, rotations and uh, positioning in Rocket League. Just as I noticed, this video will be primarily on twos matchmaking. This is one of the first tutorials I've made where I think that is kind of relevant, as this video would probably be a bit different if it were addressed to threes, but I think even if you are primarily a threes player, you might still be able to learn something if you want to stick around, but anyways, let's get right into it. So, the point of positioning as far as offense is to give your teammate another option. You can see in these clips I'm showing you now, what I typically do when my team has the ball is pay attention to how much space they have and where they are going. If they are in a good open position without the threat of the other team challenging imminently, then I try to get somewhere to give them an outlet. Position somewhere where they can probably get a pass off to if they choose to. A lot of times they might shoot and that's fine. You can then react from there. But just being there, even if they don't choose to pass to you, is threatening to the other team. They can see you open for the pass and they are going to be more hesitant to challenge your team because they will see that if they do pull forward to commit a challenge, then the goal is open for you if your teammate does get a pass off to you. A standard place to position is on the wing or kind of upfield in front of them. Give them an option to pass rather than just making it a 1v2 and then another 1v2 if they lose, if that makes sense. The point I'm trying to make is to try to play as a team rather than two separate players both trying to carry. Even if you're really good, it just won't work beyond around diamond or champ, and that's if you're really good. That kind of leads me into rotations. So in this clip I just showed you, I failed to rotate and almost give up a goal because of it. Right here, after grabbing boost, I should have went back. I'm not sure why I challenged here. I should have looked and seen my team coming up, but instead I double committed and was barely able to make a nice save to compensate for it. Now, in this clip, sort of the opposite happens. I failed my shot and I was rotating back and I didn't see my team anywhere. He should have been challenging right now. So I turned off ball cam quickly to look for him and he was hesitating way in backfield. So I sort of fake challenged, then hearing my team's car, thinking he might be finally challenging, I pulled back. But this highlights a point I want to make, that yes, there is ball chasing, but there's also sort of the opposite, like avoiding a challenge. You never want to give the opponent the entire field to set up a play. My team should not have been driving around way back in front of our goal while the other team dribbles upfield. You should always challenge to keep the other team from setting up a dribble or pass play while your teammate is rotating back. Another good idea is to position a bit behind, but in a supporting position behind your team, if they are possibly going to lose possession. Don't get too close to crowd them, but this allows you to quickly challenge if they do lose possession, before the other team sets up or gets complete control over the ball, and then if or when your team settles the ball well and has space to pass, quickly rotate out from behind them over to the wing and set yourself up to receive a pass. I was just going through some of my replays and I found this example. I got upset with myself after missing the backboard shot and quickly ball chased out of pure frustration. 
Without a doubt, this was not my ball to challenge, and I end up giving an easy goal for the other team as a result. I know this is really bad, but I think it's a perfect example of what not to do. In most cases, with some exceptions, you almost always want to rotate and refill on boost after taking a shot and let your teammate deal with the rebound in the meantime. In this clip, you can see I do a good job of spacing myself. In general, you want to be ready to support if needed, but also distant and positioned well enough to be able to be an outlet pass option as well. There were a couple times in this clip where I almost committed thinking I had a good opportunity to cut in, but my teammate kept relative possession of the ball so I kept my distance and waited for the right opportunity, which in this case was a backboard pass and my team was able to get off. So, in conclusion, you want to play twos as one cohesive force. When on both offense and defense, you want to think of your rotations as a cycle. You challenge. If you get the ball, make a play from there. If you get beat, cycle back and your teammate challenges. If your team wins, position to give them a pass option. If your team loses, it's then your turn to challenge again while your teammate rotates back and gets ready to either challenge again or give you the passing option. Anyways guys, I hope you're able to learn something or at least enjoyed watching this tutorial. I really appreciate all of you who watched this far and all the support I've been getting. But that is it though. As always everyone, have a great day and peace out.